it's uh, Monday the 17th of October. Uh, we have a fun little task this morning. We're taking out the rubbish. Which normally is not an exciting thing. But here there's no bins on property because of the bears. And uh, they have like bear proof rubbish bins up the road. So we're just driving up a mile. And we're going to go find these bins. First one, so I think the brown one. Brown one. Yeah, this one. You will find golden lock with dials on the bottom. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. What's the dials? Three, five, one, nine. Press the silver lock part into the golden one for lock to spring open. Chores complete and now we're going to Mariposa Grove today. It's about a half hour drive away and that's where they have these big sequoia trees. Okay, we're at Mariposa Grove. We just parked. Why are you pointing it at my egg? We got these eggs from our Airbnb host. They're like cold, hard boiled eggs from Costco that are good until November. I question that. Then, like this liquid. That's slimy. It's all yours. A squirrel. A squirrel. Mm. Oh, gross. No. Oh. It's food. It's food. Where's the squirrel? So we're going to the Welcome Plaza. You can't drive in Mariposa Grove unless you have a disabled spot. So yeah, we just parked here and now we're going to go take the shuttle into the actual grove. Here's a better shot of the, of the plaza. This is cut from a tree that grew in a, started growing in 1149 and fell in 1954. So it's 805 years old. They put me in it for scale. Okay, case for scale. It's big. They're saying around here is there was a drought, so the rings are really thin. And you can see here compared to these rings. That was in 1580. 1580, that was the drought. <laughs> We're beginning our walk now. We're doing the grizzly giant loop. These trees are massive. There's a few here that have fallen. I don't know if you can even see the scale of how big this tree is. This is where we're going. Grizzly giant loop trail. It's getting warm. Oh, they're little ones. I was going to say, I really like it here because it's so peaceful. Are these little sequoias? Maybe. That's what the picture said. They all start like that and then... But only some of them make it that big. So many of them. We're at the Bachelor and Three Graces. I'm guessing the one in the front is the bachelor and the three next to it are the graces. I also thought it was interesting it said that periodic fires are good for the area because it opens up sunlight for vegetation on the ground. That big tree at the end, that's, that's the grizzly giant, this one. He's 63.7 meters tall and 8.5 meters in diameter. 29 meters in circumference at its base and in relation to the Statue of Liberty it's like the same size 
Okay, we're leaving Grizzly Giant. We tried to what? I think the chipmunks. <gasps> Remember the story that we read? Oh my god, a chipmunk! And now it got its stripes. Oh my god, it's so small and cute. <gasps> Where'd it go? Oh no, I scared it. Where'd it go? Maybe it's down behind the little cliff. <gasps> oh my god, so cute. Now I'm too, too awkward to film myself, so I'm going to film Keith because there's people behind us. But I was just going to say, I was trying to film the sign that said Grizzly Giant, but there was this really annoying group of people that just stood there talking for like 15 minutes. And even when we asked them to move, they didn't really move, so I never got the chance. <laughs> this is the California Tunnel Tree. Look at this. It's got a tunnel through it. Oh, I see. So we started here. And we walked along here. That was that big one that fell. And we went here. Bachelor and Three Graces, Grizzly Giant, California, and then we're going to go round. Well, from this angle, you can really see the scale of how big the Grizzly Giant is compared to the ones around it. Apparently, they only grow down like. 10 meters or so and then they spread out really really far I think it said like 150 feet it's what 100 and something meters and and they intertwine with other trees so they don't compete for resources they like connect together It's so peaceful now that we've continued the walk and we're off the main main sort of trail area. What are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> I have no thoughts. I empty my mind to nature mm -hmm. and soak it in with no thoughts. Okay. And some fun stepping stones. Okay, we're gonna get off the trail for a little bit. We're walking towards Faithful Couple. That's us. But in tree form. It's half a mile and then we're going to go there and turn around, come back onto the grizzly giant grizzly grizzly giant trail because the other one is quite far. It's like a really long trail. It goes all the way around. Which we're not going to do, but yeah, we'll just go see this one and come back. We made it to the faithful couple. I'll show some b-roll of the tree, it's better. If you can't really see it like this. It's us. We were the trees all along. Giant sequoia roots can fuse, joining forces underground. This allows both trees to survive in close proximity, eventually growing together at the base. Stop to have some lunch. Same again. But we found mayonnaise mm -hmm. in the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Cook bowl of mayonnaise. There's a sign for the closed spin tree, which is 0 0.2 miles up the road. So we're going to go see that too before we head back. We found it. It's here. It's this one with the thing, the gap in its trunk. Um, that's pretty much all I've got to tell you about it, because there's no sign. I can only assume it's called the clothespin tree, because it 
Kind of looks like a peg. Clothes pin. Oh. I mean, that makes sense because there's a clothes, cloth spin isn't a thing. Like, what's a cloth? So it's clothes, as in clothing, clothes, pin, a peg. Clothes pin. Clothes. Like a peg, we call it a peg. Yeah. Clothes oh, that's peg. what I said. Yeah. Oh. I was calling it the clothes spin. Clothes, yeah, what was I saying? The clothes spin? Clothes spin? Clothes spin. Oh. oh. I see now. Okay, now we're heading back onto the grizzly giant loop trail. Never mind. We're going to follow this sign to the Mariposa tree. We're being fooled. It says 0.5, but it's actually 0.5 miles. They keep, they keep tricking us every time. We get to one spot and it's like, oh, the next one's only half a mile away. So you keep going and going and going. Before you know it, you're probably back in the valley or something. It's getting warmer the further up we go because there's less shade. So far, this has been a better experience than Yosemite Valley because there's more signs, it's easier to find things. I guess there's less things here and there's less people, so it's just less busy. It's easier to get good photos and yeah. I feel like most people who come here, like to Yosemite, don't come to Mariposa because it's a little bit out of the way and you probably need to spend another day here. But I think it's worth it. We're here. We made it. There's no sign here though, so I guess you guys can't learn. I can tell you though that it is very, very big. Like there's Keith for scale. So we're here by the Mariposa tree. Down there is a clothespin, faithful couple, and this is where we turned off from the grizzly giant loop. And we're just gonna backtrack and go back to the bus area. You can see here at this one on the right that they're also growing together. They're not quite as big as the faithful couple, but maybe one day, like 500 years, they might be. And this one's pretty big too, actually. They're all much bigger the further you get up the hill, probably because they get more sunlight. Now we're heading back. At least it's all downhill. Yeah, that's true. It's a woodpecker. It's picking the wood. Oh my god, he has an acorn in his mouth. <gasps> he put it in, in his little hidey hole for winter. It's funny, we stopped here to look at some chipmunks and squirrels. And so many Europeans and Americans just walking past without a care in the world, but we're so excited. Back in the car, it's uh, two thirty, so we still got a bit of time before we've got we've still got some sunlight left in the day. So we're not exactly sure where to go and what to do. We're just driving to this nearby town called Wawona. Um, it says there's like a walk we could do there, or maybe we'll just walk around and see what's there. But before we get there. I wanted to tell the vlog this really f the funniest thing happened last night <laughs> we're getting ready for bed and Keith was brushing his teeth and instead of putting toothpaste on his on his toothbrush he put sunscreen on and then this morning when he was putting sunscreen on he went and grabbed the toothpaste silly Keith okay this is where we're going for a walk on this meadow loop trail it was just off the side of the road near an abandoned golf course which is also across the road from this hotel probably can't see it too well but we were like walking over there for a bit trying to find this because it wasn't really marked and it was kind of creepy over there it felt like a i don't know period piece from the 1850s and all these people in like white lawn chairs sipping drinks and it's kind of weird what happened <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Have you had enough nature now? <laughs> no. Alright, we're heading back now. This walk wasn't too interesting anyway. 
We're going back home. The sunroof. Oh, I found the sunroof. We're gonna drive back with the sunroof down. Okay, we're back at the Airbnb and we're cooking dinner. We're making a stir fry. It's got tofu, broccoli, and we're just using a packet sauce. And then we'll put some spinach in there too. That's looking pretty bad. He says it's pretty bad. It's not very liquidy. That's why we got two. Lemongrass basil simmer sauce. The sauce is really thick, so we added some water, but we may regret this. But we got some half and half. Make it creamy at least. Yeah, because I thought it'd be good with like coconut milk, which we obviously don't have. All right, here's the final result. Got some rice, and stuff with it. I've got uh, salt and pepper and hot sauce ready just in case this is not very good. Let me try it. Sorry, the TV's on in the background. It doesn't have any flavor. Mm. Would not recommend. Hopefully this is better than dinner. We got this packet jackfruit uh, mix thing to try and have for lunch. We're gonna like make little sandwiches and we're gonna cook them up tonight to have tomorrow. Hopefully this is good. It looks good. It's crazy how a fruit can look so much like meat. This is a really common uh, sub-meat substitute in like the vegan, vegetarian world. Yep. And it's a good substitute for pulled pork. Mm. Is it good? It's very sweet. You taste the fruit. Mm. When, I've had it, when I've had it other times, it hasn't been as fruity, but that's good. Mm. It's like if you want it sweeter, you can add sugar. Oh my god, as if you need sugar. It's really sweet enough. Mm. It was way better than dinner. Way better. Alright, I'm gonna end the vlog here. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Mm -hmm.